there's been a lot of interesting changes over the last few years. And even I would say like uh, some changes since the last time I was on the Caracast, like some really big changes in mm -hmm. terms of like video traffic. And I feel like when I was on that first episode with Trevor, we were talking about like why you should take advantage of it. The time has passed. If you're not doing video now, this is not going to be a very comfortable episode for you. Like it's, it is definitely something where it is the standard. It is the thing that you have to be doing in 2023. And it's not a case of like, should I or should I not? Mm -hmm. it, it's a yes, automatically. It, it was a yes two years ago. Hey friends, welcome back to the Carrot Cast podcast. I'm your host, Brady Winder, and this is the podcast where we help investors build businesses of freedom and impact by dialing in your online marketing. So this month is video month at Carrot, video marketing month. And so this is probably one of my favorite topics and uh, it's very relevant right now. I know anytime you've heard us talk about video marketing in the past two years, we were always saying, oh, it's more relevant, but that's because it actually is. It's increasingly becoming more and more uh, relevant. Two things that happened this last year uh, that matters as far as video marketing. Uh, one of them, uh, it has become a lot more um, almost necessary in order to rank high in Google. So pages that are putting videos on their blog posts and on their pages are much more likely to rank. We don't have an exact percentage, but anywhere between 10 and 100% more likely to rank, depending on the, the topic, the types of posts. So anyways, the SEO benefits just within the last year with the updates that Google have made um, have come up a lot. And the other thing is um, I run a survey every few months, uh, every six months to a year uh, within our audience on uh, how they like to consume content, what topics they're interested in. Far and away, 80% uh, of our audience this time around wants to consume content through video. And so we're seeing the same thing uh, for our members, customers, for sellers. Uh, video content is just more of a standard right now and less and less, hey, this thing you need to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming more and more important. Um, I can't drive that any further. So we're going to have a conversation today on Video Marketing 101, so getting started, um, what, some of the tactical things, what do I need to do, what do I need to be thinking about, how do I strategize, how do I outline, what kind of topics, what do I talk about, um, how do I actually get this video done, and then a whole lot of really good technical tips on little things you can do or software you can use to make the best of this video, to really attract more leads and convert those leads into deals. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. I'm not worried about how long this podcast goes, fair warning. Um, anyways, that's what we're talking about today. And so that brings me to inviting my guest on, uh, Josh Culler. This is his second, second time on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, Josh Culler is a friend of Carrot. He's been at Carrot Camp. He's been on our Carrot Summit, which if you're wondering if Carrot Summit is happening this year, it is. Don't worry. It's the summer. We'll be announcing it very, very shortly if we haven't already. Um, anyways, Josh Culler of REI Video. Did I say that right? It's REI right. Video. Yep. Yep. REI Video. Um, Josh Culler, I was going to introduce you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, because I feel like you'll do a better job of it. The people you work with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and why yeah. people should be listening to you on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Thanks for having me back, man. Um, I was the last, actually, the first time that I was on the Carrot Cast was in the studio, so that was a lot of fun with Trevor. Yeah, uh, over there hanging out with you guys. So I appreciate you having me back. Yeah. Uh, so just in a nutshell, I'll keep it very short and sweet because I hate when you know I'm hosting a podcast and people spend 20 <laughs> minutes on introducing themselves, and I'm like, oh, well, we're almost done now. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've been in the real estate investing space for over 11 years now. So I was a marketing director for a large wholesaling organization out here in the Midwest, uh, doing anywhere from four to 500 deals a year. And I was the marketing director for that organization. And that got me uh, grounded into the real estate investing space. And now I'm um, speeding up the time. I now focus all of my services and business on real estate investors and influencers as well, educators, people that are really you know, taking what they have done in real estate and then teaching it out to other people as well. Maybe they have masterminds, coaching programs, you know, courses, stuff like that. And so what we primarily focus in now is social media, uh, full, full social media management, YouTube management and podcast management, uh, but, you know, specifically working in the real estate investing space. So there's been a lot of interesting changes over the last few years. And even I would say like, uh, 
some changes since the last time I was on the Caracast, like some really big changes in mm -hmm. terms of like video traffic and how much it, I think you said it right. I was actually going to like uh, kind of capitalize on your statement that video is not like I feel like when I was on that first episode with Trevor, we were talking about like why you should take advantage of it. Why, you know, now is the time. The time has passed. Like <laughs> if you're not doing video now, I don't like this is this is not going to be a very, very uh, uh, comfortable, comfortable episode for you. Like it's it is definitely something where it is the standard. It is the thing that you have to be doing in 2023. And it's not a case of like, should I or should I not? Mm -hmm. it, it's a yes, automatically. And it, it was a yes two years ago. So that we're going to have some good questions. I'm excited about this. <laughs> yeah, I like that. The people who are doing it are the ones who are winning. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for summarizing that. Yeah, I'll have people reach out to me from time to time. Like, hey, Brady, you, you don't need time to you know help me out with this podcast on the side. And I do from time to time. But when people get serious about it, I'm like, ah, I don't have the time. I'm all in a carrot. I'll send them to Josh. So if you really are serious about a YouTube channel, podcast, social, and you want to go all in on content, um, consider going with Josh and his team. Uh, they're really good at what they do in their their industry specific to not just real estate, but to investors, wholesalers, flippers. Mm -hmm. uh, they know you guys inside and out, and so. Uh, two more quick things before we dive into this conversation, just just to further impress uh, the in, the importance of video. Um, I was doing some research before we started the podcast today. Around twenty five percent of searches feature a video snippet at the top of the page. Uh, whenever you're googling how to you know how to make chicken pot pie, how to sell my fa house fast, Louisville, Kentucky, a lot of times there'll be a video up there, and then sometimes even a video with the snippets pulled out or little chapters of the video. That is becoming more and more common. I'm sure you guys see this every day and stuff you search. Um, another interesting tidbit uh, we've seen in our own data from over 8,000 members is that YouTube leads from YouTube convert from visitors into leads at 8.43%. So that's actually double the conversion of any other lead source. And so this it's the highest converting lead source um, we have at Carrot, which is just it's crazy, you know. Uh, people who are watching YouTube videos, they are they are motivated. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, let's dive in. I want to talk about first how to how to get started in video marketing. So, we're going to talk about the mindset and the gear. Um, I think one thing we just need to get out of the way, Josh, real quick. You probably experience this all the time. Is um, everybody? everybody has to start somewhere. People are like, what, like the biggest objections, like, I don't, I don't want to be on camera. I don't, I don't know what to do. I, to me, it's simple. It's like, you got to be willing to be bad at something and care more about the person on the other end of the screen or care more about getting the lead. You got to think about something else besides how you're looking on camera. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah. At this point in time, I, uh, when somebody asks me that question, the only response that I have is, if you're not going to do it, your competition is going to do it. So suck it up. Like there's a lot of things in business and, you know, like I, as a business owner, there's, there's so many things that I have not wanted to do, or I knew was going to suck. I knew it was going to be a grind and it was going to be something I was uncomfortable with, but as a responsibility, I had to do it because it's just part of business. Well, video content is part of marketing. You just have to do it. And of course, I think, and even you know, and it, it comes by personality, Brady. I mean, there's some people out there that have never been on video, but they're super confident in themselves and they can just hop on a camera and just talk away. Mm -hmm. and there are some people that it's the complete opposite where if, even if there's nobody on the other side of the camera, like there's literally nobody in my room right now and they're looking at a camera, it scares them to death. Um, mm -hmm. you, it's just like anything else. Practice will make perfect. You keep getting it out there and you will get better over time. If you look at anybody, anybody's videos, I mean, like the biggest YouTuber on the planet right now is Mr. Beast and, or maybe it's PewDiePie, but like, if you look at, he's probably the most well-known YouTuber. If you go back and actually look at his first video he ever posted, it was ridiculous. It, he looked, he looked so, he looked so dumb, like in his video <laughs> and it was all pixelated, yeah. low light, like, but he started somewhere. Everybody that has that you follow that has been an influencer in any way shape or form started at ground zero everybody started at zero so you if you're going to do anything with video you just got to turn the camera on start practicing i think a really good um you know thing to do that actually it's kind of funny coincidentally i just had an onboarding call with a, a new client that we're bringing on 
and he's one of those guys that he's a little bit, you know, he, he doesn't like speaking on stage. He's, you know, kind of shy on camera and stuff like that. He, he, he even said it, he's his own bi biggest critic. So if he records a video, he doesn't like it. He'll just delete it. He won't edit it or anything like that. And, you know, basically what I told him was like, dude, one of the best things that you could do for yourself, if you're that type of person is just to don't script out your video. Mm -hmm. It's create the topic, create some bullet points, and then just get it out. If you mess up, if you screw up, you say something you don't want to say, or you need to repeat yourself, just pause for a second and carry back on. That's what post-production video editing is for. You can clip all that out. So mm -hmm. there's just some mechanisms, I think, Brady, that people can, if they really pull back the curtain, they look at like what video has become nowadays. It's not live TV. You're not a news anchor that you have to be perfect on every single word that comes out of your mouth. You have to articulate clearly, can't stutter, can't trip over your words. That's not the case. Like there's, there's ways to get it happening. And they're not, they're yeah. just, again, the number one thing I would say is just suck it up. Cause if you're not going to do it, your competition's going to. Right. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said that thing about scripts too. That was one of the things I was going to talk about as far as outlining videos is for me, I mean, there's a time and a place for scripts, but more yeah. often than not, bullet points can be what's most helpful. Tell me, what does this look like for you? So if I'd say, Josh, we're going to record, say, I'm going to record a video of you and the video is about like teaching people how to sell their house fast in Louisville, Kentucky, or working with a, like working with a real estate investor in Louisville, Kentucky. How many bullet points are you doing? What does that look like to keep you? What do you need to stay on track? Yeah, that's a great question. And there's two answers I'm going to give actually, and, and a couple of variables to this. If you're doing like an ad video, say for instance, you're actually using the video to be a Facebook ad, I would mm -hmm. recommend scripting it. And the only reason why is because you want to get out what like, you know, you're paying for X amount of time to be, to have your ad out or, you know, just script it, make sure it's very well articulated <laughs> yeah. and I would practice it and record it several times because the problem that I've always had, Brody, with people that script videos and put them on a teleprompter, or maybe they just try to memorize it. It's very unnatural for us to read something off and remain human while doing it. We like to turn our robotic voices on and not move, not show any animation or any emotions at all. And that's what ultimately connects. That's, that's one of the biggest reasons why video is so powerful is because it connects emotionally, intellectually. And it's just, it's, it's far more connective than um, putting copy out there for somebody to read or any other form mm. of content. And it's very hard to read off of script. I can't even do it. I have out of the couple hundred people over the years that I've recorded videos with, there's only one person that I have allowed to use a teleprompter because they were really good at it. And they've had a pass mm. with reading teleprompter scripted videos. So just what I would say is if you're going to do a short form piece of content, if you really feel like you need to script it out and it's got to get to the point, you know, like I said, if it's for an ad or something like that, then, or TV commercial, of course, script it out just practice it a handful of times and stay focused on trying to keep the human element. The mm -hmm. alternative, of course, is uh, my recommendation is not scripting videos and doing bullet points. I would say for every every minute that you're going to go and talk about something, maybe create two basic bullet points. The thing that I don't want to do, it's almost like going back into the school days where you don't want to literally write an entire paragraph for your you know bullet point. You want to just... I, I treat it like a headline. So here's the headline of my bullet point number one, headline of bullet point number two, and then you talk about those things. And the key, the key too is, Brady, is that something that's a little off topic with this that I always like to mention is you shouldn't be talking about things that you don't know inside and out anyway. Mm. So <laughs> yeah, if, it, yeah, if good you point. don't, if you can't talk about it on a podcast like this comfortably and get all the information out, regardless of if you're comfortable on camera or not, you shouldn't be doing it anyway. So if you can't riff for 20 to 30 seconds on a bullet point, then, you know, go away from that topic. So I think that with bullet points, just treat them like headlines, do one or two bullet points for every minute that you plan on talking. So five minute video, maybe not 10 bullet points, but somewhere in the neighborhood of like six to six to nine um, bullet points would be a good idea, but make them as informational to you as possible. And the important thing is just you getting the content out. Mm, I like that at one, you know, one to two for every minute or so. Cause that's about, it's like about how long your brain can go remembering what you're talking about. You know what Before I mean? Before it goes to mush. I, I do one per minute 
uh, but that's what works for me, right? So yeah. I'm the type of person could also riff for five minutes if you just give me one thing to talk about. But it, it and I didn't start off that way either, by the way. And I'm sure Brady, like you're you're pretty fluent on camera as well. And I'm sure you didn't start off that way. I'm sure Trevor didn't start off that way. Right. It takes practice and time to evolve that over time to be comfortable on camera and allow yourself to get information out. Oh, it's uh, it's cringy in the beginning. It's cringy. I'm not yeah. going to link up some of our old content so y'all can <laughs> click it in the show notes. Um, go look go it find up. it on our channel. <laughs> yeah. Go to our you channel, do, sort by oldest. <laughs> yeah, it's cringy. Uh, don't judge the light, lighting or audio either. Um, everybody starts. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is knowing your goal. So I feel like, you know, you talk about video, it can be really vague, like, oh, video marketing. And people might think of TikTok. They might think of Instagram, social. They might think of TV. I don't know. Uh, but for the sake of this conversation, we're talking about generating leads. And so I think one of the, I'm sure you see this as one of the mistakes I see people do is they haven't really thought or they haven't decided exactly what they want their video to be for so they say well i want to generate leads with it but i also want to be an influencer and i also want to share with other yeah. people how to do xyz and so yeah. create videos that maybe sometimes they're good but they don't have a clear purpose and so yeah. they kind of just they don't really hit when you're watching them you know video of someone yeah. walking through hey we're flipping a house is what we're doing this. i'm not saying don't shoot that content because it can be helpful but know why you're doing it is this is this for like a social media outlet or your website where you're you know educating people on what it's like work with a wholesaler or, or an investor or are you trying to get coaching students so you can teach people how to flip houses it's, yeah. it's usually two different things you know dude i um so when i travel to speak i'm, I'm gonna be traveling to uh, a large area in pennsylvania next week and um i got asked to to speak on a similar topic, but I'm like, you know what, let me frame it a little bit differently. And the pr type of presentation, I call it the North Star. So the North Star is obviously, you know, the story of, um, you know, Jesus being born and the three wise men were following the, following the North Star to, you know, get to their destination, basically. It's just a waypoint is really what it is. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what your, you can also call it your goal, like your objective, whatever you want to call it. The North Star, though, it's basically you're on a path somewhere. And in your marketing, if you don't have a very specific point in which you're trying to reach, whether it's the end of a funnel that you have built out or it's step one would be like, click the link in my bio, fill out this landing page, fill out X, Y, and Z, go do this, go do that. You know, you have ascensions for that. But at the end of the day, if they're not reaching your North Star, then your marketing could be pointing to multiple different things that can really confuse the fact of what you do. So if you create what your North Star is, for some people, you know, if you're if you're, say, a realtor listening and your North Star is, it, and it could be more than one thing, but I, unless you have multiple businesses, it should not be more than three to five things, period. Like, unless you own multiple mm. businesses and you have different products that you're working with, with, with within. Uh, but say, for instance, you're a realtor, maybe your North Star is to get more listings and to, you know, sell more deals. Right. So it could be, you know, one of those two things or whatever it is. It could be one of those, you know, it could be one or two more whatever it looks like, but you have to be very specific on what that is. And then every bit of content that you work within is literally just pointed at that. That's mm -hmm. the objective. Because again, like you said, the, you know, there's some people out there, I, I, I run into this all the time where, uh, you know, somebody will contact me and they'll say, you know, I attended this mastermind and, you know, uh, like I, I got up to speak and like five people in the room were like, you're a really good speaker. You should do social media stuff. And then I responded like, eh, I don't really like social media. I just want to, you know, buy real estate and sell it. You know, maybe I'm a wholesaler or whatever it is. And then they get pressured into doing it. Now they're shooting videos on random topics that they have no idea why they're shooting them. <laughs> That's a waste of time. We call that garbage. <laughs> so <laughs> if yeah. you have a specific, you know, goal, North Star that you're trying to achieve, everything that you do content wise, not just video content, but primarily video content should be centered around that. And I boil that also down to demographics and that goes down into platforms, Brady. So like when I'm hopping on a onboarding call with a new client, we go through the process of who your demographic is. It's, it's marketing 101, your, your target demographic, your avatar, whatever it is, the ideal person you want to work with. And if they're not, believe it or not, not everybody consumes TikTok. 
believe it or not, not everybody's on podcasts and listen to podcasts. So if your demographic is not there, then why would you put content there? Why would you be building mm-hmm. something that's not there? The other, the other uh, kind of rebuttal to that I get ready is, you know, build it and they will come or like, you know, <laughs> there, there are scenarios, there are rare, very rare scenarios yeah. where you could start putting something out and then your demographic will flock to it. But you got to remember the more sophisticated your demographic is, the less likely they are to budge off of what they're currently using. So there's right. so many variables that, that comes to this. Um, and you know this too. If you're saying that everybody is your target demographic, then nobody is. Right. You got to get very specific with it. Figure out where they hang out, what they consume, what type of content they consume, what they're looking for. And that's what you got to put videos out about. Yeah. I, I really appreciate how you didn't gloss over it and just called it for what it is. You say that's garbage. I call it noise, but it's, it's anything thing, outside yeah. the focus. People can garbage feel it. makes noise. <laughs> just remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it reminds me of uh, essentialism. I'm going to botch this, but in essentialism, yeah. Greg McEwen talks about how you need to have know what the finish line is, know what the end goal yes. is. Otherwise you're just going to be creating indefinitely forever. You're never going to know when you reach that finish line. You're never going to know when you get to the destination. And that obviously that destination repeats itself, you know, based on conversions, you know, you want more conversions, but you know, my, my proper rule of thumb dude is like, whatever you have to offer a simple quote that I like to say is content slash social media slash video marketing is literally just explaining to your target demographic about what you do, who you are and your industry. If you answer Mm. those questions, that's literally how you can frame your topics around and the type of content you put out. That's, that's going to solve all your problems and asking questions of like, I don't know what topics to write or to do videos about, or I don't know what platforms to post on. That's what you do. Because also, and, and you know, this too, man, is that like, if you're say, for instance, if you have, if you're a real estate investor, you're a wholesaler, as much as we'd like to say referrals are a really good source of getting more deals. It's not realistic. You might get one or two, you know, on a periodic basis, but for the most part, you're doing, you're doing repetitive actions to get deals. So Mm. putting out daily social media videos, or let's just say, for instance, you started a podcast to bring you more deals. You're not going to have a thousand motivated sellers lined up to listen to your podcast every week. (laughs) It's a transactional service is really what it is. That being said, maybe the alternative is I know I have a couple friends of mine that do um, uh, Brian Snyder down in Indianapolis. He does a podcast that's specifically built to educate other Indianapolis wholesalers and real estate investors to bring him deals. So he teaches mm-hmm. them how to bring them because they don't want to do their own marketing. So they have other wholesalers bring them deals and it brings them deals all the time. So that's the alternative. But if your objective is depending on going directly to the motivated seller, that could dictate the platform that you're on and the frequency because once again, you're not going to have a hundred thousand so you know Instagram followers that are all motivated sellers watching your your daily videos. That's just not how right. it works. So there's, yeah. there's variables. Or maybe you could even go, you know, talk on like a community podcast about you know how you are the local investor in your community and right. why you're different from an agent and what you offer. Or maybe right. sponsor a podcast episode. There's yeah. Um one thing I want to hit on real quick, uh, gear. We're not gonna we're not gonna spend time talking about gear. Y'all can Google this. Y'all can look at blog posts for getting started with video marketing. I was gonna say I'll I'll just give one high level expert tip here. Yeah. If you have an iPhone that is, I would say newer. So I even have the. I'm a content creator, but I just have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, whatever the top end one is. And if you have this or newer, you're good to go. Record content on there. On Amazon, you can buy mics that plug into your lightning port, and then it's wirelessly lapeled to you to get good audio, get good video feed. Record content that way. It works as long as you've got good lighting, as long as you frame yourself correctly, it'll work. You know, you don't have to have... Yeah. So, like Brady's setup looks in, insanely incredible. Mine looks pretty solid. Uh, but there's stages to it. Everybody thinks that they can buy $10,000 worth of camera gear and jump right into it, but that's not where it starts. Again, everybody starts from ground zero and what better to create content with something that you already have. So that's my expert yeah. on gear. That's my expert yeah. opinion. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I was going to say iPhone 3GS. Um, <laughs> that works in too. All, in all seriousness, though, it's like, 
it depends a lot on the audience too. So like for motivated sellers specifically, they're, you know, if this is an ad or a thing on social media, it needs to kind of blend in with the feed, blend in and I think stand out at the same time. Yeah. But by blending, I mean like if it looks overly polished, overly commercialized and professional, um, they might gloss over it depending on what they're looking for. So right. just food right. for thought. I think a really good way to go about um, recording content in the context of what you just said too is environment is very important too. So if you're shooting a video specifically to motivated seller leads, be at a property maybe that you have under contract, or if you don't have anything, maybe you're just getting started, go to your parents' house or go to your house and go in the front yard and, you know, shoot a video in front of a house that you would be in, that would be in your buy box. Um, you know, if you don't buy D class in D class neighborhoods, don't go to a D class neighborhood and, you know, in a war zone and record videos, but be in the same environment. I think that's really important and underrated as well. Um, when recording. So don't be afraid. Don't, don't shy away from just getting out of your office and, you know, recording videos too. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yep. Well said. Uh, keep it simple. Start with an iPhone. Um, let's talk about topics. This is, um, this is a big one. Nobody knows what to talk about. I think, you know, we already covered, you covered one of the most important things, which is if you don't know what to talk about, uh, the best tip we can give you is, um, ask, find out what questions people are asking. So find yeah. out what questions sellers are asking and just answer their questions. That's like the definition. That's like content marketing 101 is yes. answer the questions that people are asking and give them the best value you can. Um, something, uh, something that's disrupting the internet as we know it right now, AI, chat GPT, um, it's like everyday conversation. Like, what is it doing? What is it doing? Um, it's, it's, it, maybe it's a bunch of buzz right now and it's actually not as powerful as we think it is. Maybe not. Maybe things, maybe the landscape of Google and Bing really does completely yeah. change in a couple of years. We're staying on top of that. Anyways, the reason I, br I bring it up is because, um, there's a, there's a place for it. So, uh, my job as a podcast host and content strategist, I'm, I'm constantly coming up with ideas and what to talk about, what we should be talking about when we can talk about anything, how to format that. I found it really helpful. I don't know if you've used it all, Josh, but I found it helpful as not, um, not to do the bulk of my thinking, but as a helper, as an Spark. assistant for when I get stuck. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you could do it two ways. So you could use chat GPT to get you to like, you know, 50% of a blog post, like give me the outline, yeah. um, give me, you know, something to talk about. I like to use it for, um, outlines, like help me summarize this idea, or let's say I'm, I have an idea and I'm thinking of another way to say it. Hey, uh, reword this phrase, yeah. um, or conclusions. So concluding a video or a blog post can be difficult because a lot of people get stuck at the very end. It's like, okay, write me a conclusion to this. Mm -hmm. It could be helpful for that. Any thoughts on chat GPT and, are we all going to be replaced tomorrow, Josh? <laughs> no. So I think it's one of those things. And I'm not, I will say this first, I'm not an expert in it, but you know, like I mentioned earlier, one of my full-time jobs as a CEO of my organization is research and development. So I spend a lot of time digging into stuff like this. I think, um, you know, anytime something new comes to the forefront like this, it does get hyped. You know, for instance, um, I have my uh, my meta VR headset over here that we play games mm -hmm. on and stuff like that. And I remember when VR first came to the forefront, when uh, Samsung was kind of the biggest one to launch it and you would have to take your phone and set it inside of the the yeah. headset and then you would do that and your phone would burn up after like 10 minutes and stuff like that. And it became hype and then it kind of like dialed back a little bit and then meta really brought it back up and uh, you know, Oculus has been around since since that time period and it was really under Samsung's watch and then moved over to Facebook slash Meta. Uh, I think it, it, it has the feeling of that. So I think it's something that is a, I think people are looking at it like it could be like this huge thing. But I think right now it's just a tool that can help with a lot of things that you talk about. You, you presented it in a really good way. I think it's just a tool to kind of either spark, get you started, help you finish up, give you ideas, create sparks, whatever it is. But I think that, you know, for instance, I tested a handful of things. I love asking questions is how I mm -hmm. learned. I was terrible in school. And so asking questions is like how I learned everything. And uh, it, it got me really excited. You know, I even went as far as to, um, we were looking for a new copywriter for our team and I had chat GPT 
write me a, a job posting for a social media copywriter. And it did a pretty bang up job. Like it did a really good, it got, it got about 85% accurate on what I would type out. And I just had to go through and edit a, a couple things and something that would have taken me, you know, close to an hour to type out it literally, I finished it in like eight minutes um, after I edited what it had already presented. But I think a really good leverage point, you know, I tested this the other day as well. Um, you know, people in, in order for, to use stuff like this and technology like this, you have to be good at asking the right question, but understanding what the other side of it is. For example, um, what I asked chat GTP to do for me was I, I, I'm going to try to like word it exactly how I worded it. I said, create me 50 topics for video content that business owners are asking about. And it literally listed out 50 topics of the most asked questions on the internet mm. of what people are asking about video content. And I was like, okay, those are my topics that I'm going to be shooting videos on for the next couple months. And it did a really good job on that. So if you got specific, I can't imagine, I didn't test this yet, but I can't imagine that if you look at chat GTP and you say, create me 25 topics that uh, for sale by owner, you know, uh, motivated sellers are asking about, you know, it might be able to spit you out a handful of really good topics. But, you know, I, I do... I do like the idea, you know, I have been reading up that Google is planning on coming out with a competitor within the next few days uh -huh. uh, to that. That is no shock and surprise to me because normally Google is not the first one to do things. It is like the second or third, but because mm -hmm. of it being Google, they do it the best <laughs> and then yeah. they squash whatever the first one was. Yeah. Uh, Apple and Google have that reputation to do it. Apple's never the first to anything either, uh, but they will crush at, the, you know, even after their second or third to it. But I'm, I'm excited about this type of technology. I think people need to just be leveraging it as a tool right now and just be focused on asking the right question to, to the program. But yeah, I don't, I don't see it being a everyday useful tool for somebody uh, for another, like probably two or three years. It has some development to go under, but it's, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty impressive at, at the given moment. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a, it's a good helper right now for sure. And you still, you know, kind of like you were alluding to, you still need a, a human element to at a minimum QC it to make sure it, it is yeah, the right thing. Control. I even yeah. gave it to my, uh, as soon as I heard about it, I sent it over to my lead, uh, uh, my, my department lead for my quality control and, and writing department. And I'm like, Hey, take a look at this and see if this is something that you could use in your department. Cause they, I mean, they quality control. I mean, we, we, we edit and publish close to about 5,000 pieces of content on a weekly basis. So my quality control team has to have eyeballs on every single one of those every mm -hmm. single week. So I'm like, go through and see if this is something that will help you guys, you know, in efficiency. And she was able to discover like one or two things that it might help with, uh, mostly with like descriptions and show notes creation. But yeah. uh, I think like, it, it's just underdeveloped right now because it just started, but it's, it's right. going to, I'll keep an eye on it. It's going to, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. We'll check back in on it a year from now. Maybe we'll have another conversation about it. Yeah, Let's change. of course. Um, so topics, I've got a, uh, I've got a list of topics here for generating seller leads. We pulled this from our video marketing playbook. I don't know if I said this at the beginning of the podcast It's video marketing month, go to carrot.com slash video. We've got this playbook. Uh, Josh actually helped us come up with a V1 of this a while back and we revamped it in the last year, but basically how to get started on video, a list of 52 ideas. So that's one idea per week and just all the essential information you need to know to get going with video marketing in one nice little PDF. So anyways, I pulled this, most of it from that list of 52. I'm going to run through them and just and talk about them real quick. Josh, feel free to interrupt me or if you have any you want to add, just go for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just going to give you guys these so you know what to talk about. Um, seller testimonials probably hands down the most important thing you can do. If you haven't done a deal yet, get character testimonials from other people you know about you, you as a person, your character. But seller testimonials, get them on video, plaster them. I'm gonna chime in here real quick. Yeah. Something super cool. So like, I don't know if, I'm hoping you haven't discovered this yet because it would be really cool if you didn't that I found something that that you didn't find yet. Oh, I'm excited brought, now. I brought value to. So one of the, number one is seller testimonials. 
I, and, and the reason why I wanted to bring this up in the first place, is because that is normally what people revert to, uh, for video content is getting video, you know, you're at the closing table, you want to get, you know, your cell phone out and record a quick video. What I see happen though, and it's been acceptable up until this point, because now you have the tool to be able to help this is, you know, let's say for instance, your closing table is like three feet across. Well, you're sitting on the other side with your phone recording it. Where's the microphone? It's next to you. So it's across Mm -hmm. the table. And so maybe you're in a bigger room. So it sounds hollow. The person that's on the other side of the camera more than likely is not good at speaking on camera because that's not what they do. So they're just going to give it their best bang up shot. You're going to have fuzz. You might have some like office sounds in the background, the fax machines going, the the copiers, printers, phones ringing, stuff like that. So my lead video editor discovered a tool called it's it's an adobe tool and it's called adobe podcast but what it does is it has a um a speech enhancer tool to it it's in beta mode right now i think you have to have an adobe account to use this basically what you do and brady after we're done maybe i'll show you an example because you won't believe me if you haven't tried this yet sorry basically i'm gonna stop googling do, it in all honestly i'm getting distracted I'm like i have to know about this right now dude, i'm the podcast guy it is, <laughs> it, normally <laughs> normally when i discover stuff like this i'm kind of like oh that's kind of cool it, it might help but this is this right here is something that i require all of my videos to go through at this point wow. so it will literally take any audio like i've i've done it with um testimonial videos where it was just, there was fuzz in the background. They were they were just super hollow. They were quiet because they were like four or five feet away from the camera type thing. And it was with a cell phone. You got to just strip the audio, put it into this software. It takes like maybe two minutes tops. It'll spit it back out. I'm telling you, it will sound like they have a podcast microphone right next to their mouth. Really? And it will make it sound immaculate. Um, hmm. You got to test it, Brady. It is mind blowing. But that alone, we're going into a phase where content is becoming unacceptable to have high quality standards. You have to have high quality standards to get what you're trying to get to because people are just sick and tired of watching cruddy Zoom videos and cell phone recordings. You have to make it as high quality as possible. Audio is one of those ways to do it. This right here, seller testimonials, it will ultimately. 10x the quality so, of the video by just doing that i i thank you for mentioning that i'm so glad you did because we were just i was recording a podcast last week at the you know if you listen to this in march it just came out a couple weeks ago but it's all about testimonials keith and bo and i we dive really deep into this and keith had mentioned how he had thrown out a testimonial it was like one of his best testimonials you know throw it out because the phone was so far away didn't think about it and it's like i can just hear that that conference room sound in my head where it's 15 yeah. feet away and you didn't get what you needed to get dude it um, takes all of that out it cleans it up it is the most mind-blowing software for editing it, like media at all that i've seen and it's all it's all automatic so you don't have to make any adjustments or anything it'll do it for you it just knows what to to take out to add and stuff like that and and a lot of times um, you know for me like i speak at a higher tone so i don't have uh-huh. much of a low voice so it'll equalize my 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 tone as well. And it just sounds when you put headphones on after you run it through it, it just sounds so good. So mm. I mean to interrupt you with that, but I know yeah, testimonials yeah. is the number one thing with topics. And that's the biggest barrier is you know, you don't you don't normally have a DSLR camera with a lapel mic at your closing table. So I still want you to capture video. If your concern is audio, run it through that, you'll be good to go. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I had not heard of it yet. You got me all excited. I'm glad I hadn't heard of it. I'm going to be, I know what I'm doing for the rest of today. I'm going to be testing that out. You'll be stuck. on um, it. <laughs> yeah. Get the mic close to the person you're recording. Get the phone close. The closer you are, the less room noise and all y'all are yeah. closing your deals in a big empty conference room. That's echoey as all get out. So get the mic close. Um, second about me video. This is huge. Um, this is the thing that converts your visitors into leads and leads into deals is people getting to know you, like you, trust you, and they can see that you're a real human in your market. Do an about me video, do one by yourself um, to get started. And then I would even recommend once you've got a better feel for you know how you position your service and uh your your overall messaging maybe even bring in a videographer to do a legitimate like professional about me video that is a time and a place to do a professional video Mm -hmm. um so you can show that you're 
a notch above the competition because most people are not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. About me video. Um, and then some of the more general topics, how to sell your, these are more obvious and a lot of them are aligned with uh, Google keywords, uh, what sellers are searching for. They're not always the same as YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, do keyword research there, there's a lot of times some variance, but how to sell your house fast for cash in Pensacola, Florida, whatever city state. So maybe talk about um, the steps you would need to do or did you know that you can sell your house this fast? Did you know you can close this fast? Um, Let's talk about some of the things people might not know, the questions they have. Uh, we buy houses in city state. So talk about where you buy houses, um, what types of houses you buy. Home buyers in you know, city state, Roseburg, Oregon. Uh, we're home buyers in Roseburg, Oregon. How are we different from an agent investor or how are we different from agents? Uh, how to stop foreclosure in Roseburg, Oregon. If you're about to be foreclosed on, here's the five steps you can take to not get foreclosed, or here's what you might want to prepare for. How to deal so with the foreclosure. I like, I like that one because, um, not that the other ones are bad, but I like that one because the context of it is you're delivering some value to the mm. person watching the video. You're giving them tips on what to do if they're going through something and then giving yourself as a solution is a really good yeah. way to frame it up. So the other ones are great as well, but I like that one, the concept of that one because yeah. it's value leading and then you give call to action at the backside of it saying if you need help with this i have solution for you here's what that is so yeah well i i actually like that you said that because it, it you know the reason that one stands out versus the others is one of the most important things i learned about copywriting a while back from trevor actually is is opening a loop in the person's mind you yeah. can do this like almost borderline unethical, like with clickbait, you know, you open up the Google app and there's like 100 articles that are just pure clickbait. And, but they're all opening a loop. Like you won't believe what these people did to their child when going through the airport security line. That was literally one I saw yesterday. Come on. Anyways, but it's how to stop foreclosure. So they know that they're going to get the value out of it. Like five yeah. steps to stop foreclosure in city state or um, three ways uh, working with an investor is different from an agent would be yeah. a better way to spice up that topic. Mm -hmm. um, real estate investor versus agent, pros and cons. Uh, top five mistakes when selling your Roseburg, Oregon home. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, top five neighborhoods. This one is a little bit more geared towards uh, buyer leads, but I put it in here because I, th I think it's still... Um, I don't see investors do it enough and it can still really position you as an authority. This is the content that agents are making all day, every day, you know, top five neighborhoods in Portland, Oregon. But if, you know, someone, if a motivated seller goes to your website and they're looking to sell their house fast and they see, oh, this guy actually knows all my neighborhoods in and out. He's a local guy. I think that adds a, a great deal of credibility yeah. to you. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then a uh, tip, we already covered this, but what questions are you getting from your prospects? Um, ask them or ask chat GPT, either one, whatever. <laughs> um, any, any thoughts on topics, Josh, that's my short list from the video marketing playbook. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, um, those are really good places to start and don't be afraid to overlap any of those topics because generally speaking, a lot of those topics will overlay with each other. I think another mm -hmm. good kind of contextual, uh, topic silo would be processes so like the process mm -hmm. of working with it you could keep it in general the process of working with a wholesaler or if you're a realtor the process of selling your house with a realtor um because there's a lot of questions that people have i i had never even even though i've been in this real estate investing space for a long time i've actually never listed a house with a real estate agent before and last march it, it's been a year since we've moved into the house that we're currently in and last year in February was the first time I'd ever dealt with a realtor. And dude, I had so many questions. There were so many things <laughs> that I had no idea what to expect with it. And I think just realtors, not that my realtor didn't do a good job of this, but because he is answering all my questions, he's a close personal friend of mine. But I think a lot of people when they're, you know, going to list their house or they're going to buy a house, like they have so many questions. So any of those questions that you can answer by opening up processes is a good idea. Also, like if you're a real estate investor, like what's the closing process? If you're a realtor, what's the closing process? If I'm buying a house and selling mine and, or whatever it is, if you can list out those processes, people want to know step one through whatever in order to get to the destination. 
that they're trying to achieve. And if you can answer those questions, then you're creating clarity in their mind. You automatically have built credibility mm -hmm. with yourself with that person. So process is another thing that I really like to do. I mean, uh, it, honestly, it's common practice in the education world. If you go to open your phone right now to any real estate influencer and click on their first video on Instagram reels, it's it's guaranteed to be some sort of a process, whether it's like, mm. here's the five things that you got to do to close more deals. And then they're walking you through those five things, the process of what it looks like to close more deals. Or yeah. here's how you can sleep better. Like they're going to walk you through step one through four of how to sleep mm -hmm. better. There's just the, the process of working through things with you know, your demographic is very, very important. And uh, I, I think it's very underrated. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't do. They want to go straight to the about me videos, which of course you should do, but that's not where the buck stops. You've got to keep going and providing value is very key when it comes to especially video content. Oh yeah. And I mean, the things that you and I were both talking about can be useful for, you know, are useful for lead gen and awareness and, yeah. and warming up those leads is for sort of the middle of the funnel. But I would be so excited as a investor or an agent right now, because the tools that are available to us to create content like you're talking about are so powerful, but also so underutilized. And so I'm not a real estate agent, but I can't imagine how many texts a real estate agent gets because I know what I text my real estate agent, <laughs> you know, at 8 PM on a Sunday night. Hey, I got a question for you. dude. I can't imagine how much they get bombed. And then it's like the opportunity to answer so many of those things with really sweet, short form video content. It's like, Oh my gosh, there's so many less I, manual ways to do this. I I was look I was just about to look it up. Like I could go back into my text thread with my realtor from last year and probably pull out like 45 to 50 topics just from the questions that I asked. <laughs> oh my gosh, it, man. Like it's it's yeah. ridiculous. There's so many questions out there. So I think that pe people don't have an excuse to create topics. It's literally just answering the questions that your target demographic has about what you do, your industry, um you know, and, and the process of working with you and, you know, what it is that you do. Like literally what I would do is if you're struggling with this is document for one day, document every single task that you do and then create spinoff topics about those tasks that you do and then deliver mm -hmm. that on video. Absolutely. I love that. And if, you know, and if, if you find yourself like saying the same things, or if you're an agent, like texting people back or you're an investor and you're training your team, telling them the same things all the time, like, yeah, I empathize with you. It sounds exhausting. It's a lot. I know, and I know it's work to create the process or to create the video, but at the same time, like you can be proactive about it. You know, you yeah. can educate people with videos in your website. You can say, Hey, you know, we've started working together. Here's three short little videos on what you can expect from working with me. Here's how the process is going to go. I mean, I like to say like nothing beats a personal touch, but and, and so like offer a personal touch sure when you can, but is it scalable? And yeah, you know, I don't know. A I good method. Yeah, a good method that I think is is a good idea for that is uh, like for instance on my team, uh, if somebody asks a question about something specific, what I do is I have like a one to two minute short video that, and I have like a massive unlisted playlist on my YouTube channel for all this stuff for video training for internal team. But I recommend this for external marketing as well is that you shoot a one or two minute video that explains it at a high level. And then maybe you shot another video that's like, like a five to 10 minute video that goes deeper. And at the end of your two minute video, you could say, if this didn't explain it and you need more details, I have a link down below to the next video that explains everything into detail because mm. now you're given the option for them to get the short, quick answer or everything into de every nitty gritty detail you can have to offer. It's a lot of work, but if you go above and beyond that way, you will see results with that. Like it's, it's uh, night and day difference. Yeah. I like that. It's like the Reddit TLDR too lazy exactly. didn't read it. Too yep. lazy didn't want to watch. That's exactly what it is. Yes. Okay. Um, quick side note, anybody listening to this podcast might, you know, our true audience, people who are tuning in every week, if you'd be interested in a, was it TLDL too lazy? Didn't listen. If anyone out there is interested in like, uh, condensed podcast episodes, like, Hey, you didn't feel like listening to the hour and 10 minute long podcast with Brady and Josh. Where's the five minute version. Let me know. Brady at care.com. Email me. I'm genuinely curious. <laughs> it's the <like> cliff notes. <laughs> 
Yes, the cliff yeah. notes. I'm curious. Maybe we put it at the beginning. I don't know. If nobody emails me, don't expect it. You have to listen all hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> um, okay, so we talked about topics. Uh, we covered a lot there. I think the last thing I want to talk about, um, and maybe one of the most valuable, is a few tools and uh, really creative use cases for video for real estate. And so mm -hmm. uh, I want to go through this list, and and then we will wrap it up because we could talk all day on this stuff. Yeah. But um, anyways. Uh, as we go through this list, at this point in the podcast, you might be feeling overwhelmed. You might have a million ideas if you're anything like me. Um, I give you full permission to just hit pause. Don't even finish the episode. Go shoot the video if you're feeling motivated. Just go do the About Me video. Go start getting testimonials. Um, and then come back and hit play when you have started making these videos and find some tools uh, to you know, help speed I, things up, reason differently. I, I could give a, I could give a, a helpful solution too. what well, yeah. typically what I, I'm, I'm a step one through whatever type person. Like I don't like to, I'll think ahead, but if I, if I haven't gotten past step two, then I can't go to step five. So mm -hmm. I, I think a really good, like step one is create your topics of what you, if you, before you've done that, if you have not yet, which if you're in business, you should have already done this is create your target demographic, your avatar. A really good, mm -hmm. easy way to do this is just to go to either the one page marketing book, just Google that, and um, that'll help you nail down all of those details. So it's like demographics, age, um, you know, occupations and you know, uh, geographical locations, stuff like that. And that, or you could do the Donald Miller story brand uh, kind of exercise there. So either one of those will work. That will establish mm -hmm. demographics, step one. Step two, start creating your topics. I would create you know, you have 52 topics here at your disposal. So like, that's not an excuse there. Create another like 25 to 30 topics for yourself. Sounds like a lot. Once you get past five, you will be riffing through those. I promise yep. you, it will be much easier going yep. through writing those topics down. Then as you do that, schedule something, you know, you know, your own capacity. So block out whether it's once a week, once every other week, or once a month, and just bat what we call batch your video recordings. So mm -hmm. if you're going to choose once a month and you're doing say three videos a week that you're publishing, that's 12 videos a month that you need to record. So the, the first Monday of the month, that's when you record your 12 videos and then you don't have to worry about it over, you know, for the rest of the month until the next month. Likewise for if you're going to do once a week or once every other week or whatever that is, batch your videos, record them, and then you can move on to getting them out into the public. So you start with those three steps. You you have no excuses at this point. You got to just go execute that. Don't don't get overwhelmed with everything else. Brady, please. Yeah, thanks continue. for doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah. I see I'm a I'm a step 1 through 10 guy. I love following them. Terrible at creating them. <laughs> I'm not naturally geared towards processes and planning. I train all my team and, and I have to train clients too. So I, it's repetitive. <laughs> no, that's good stuff. That's good, man. Um, okay. So top seven, well, it's going to be nine by the time we're done with this podcast. It, top creative uses for video for real estate. Um, one, uh, shameless plug video post. Uh, Carrot's video post tool within our own software. So if you're recording videos and you have a Carrot site and you're not already using this, um, I, I don't know what to tell you. You're missing out. You probably could be ranking higher if you do this right. So what is this? It's you record a video, uh, how to sell my house fast, Roseburg, Oregon. You put it into our video post tool, automatically transcribes it, puts it in your blog post, Spend 15, 20 minutes um, adding your uh, H1, H2 tags, those are your titles, your headings, and uh, rework the wording so that it sounds a little bit more natural. Yeah. Or you could say this is a transcript from the video. We do the same thing with our podcast episodes. We put the transcript in the blog post. Helps tremendously for SEO, SEO alone, but also if you forget about SEO. If somebody wants an alternative to watching the video, then there you go. They can read through it if that's their preferred way to learn because the video is not for everybody. It is for most, but not for everybody. Um, and they can skim through to see what it's about, just like Google can. So use video post. Um, a quick use case for this, so you know I'm not just talking theory. Uh, we shot a video. I'll link it up in show notes, but Trevor and I, a few years back, shot a video about how to use video posts. And in, I'm getting really meta here, but in that video, we 
shot a video on a cell phone of like uh, co work spaces in Roseburg, Oregon. Hey, if you're looking for a co work space, uh, check out the loft in Roseburg, Oregon. We did that, uploaded it. It's ranked number, I believe, at the time of recording, this is still ranked number one for co work space, Roseburg, Oregon. It's not a competitive term, but that's not the point. The point is how easy it was and how effective it is at getting things to rank. So, did the video, transcribed it, got it up there. Um, I also did this with, if you go Google, now someone's going to try to outrank me if I say this, uh, Video Husky video husky Reviews. Go look it up and there's a video that I shot, I scripted and recorded, put it into Carrot's video post. I've been ranking number one above Video Husky's own website for like two years now. I'm outranking their own website, which is just crazy. Super powerful. Um, so video post, uh, second one, I just threw this in there cause I just remembered a video ask. Um, we had a, have you ever heard of that Josh video ask? No. Mm -mm. This is really interesting. It's, um, we had a carrot camper share this tool with us and they're using it to basically screen and qualify, uh, tenants for their rentals, but uh, there's a million uh, use cases yes. for it. You could use it for getting testimonials too. Yeah. Like we're, we're probably going to experiment with it at carrot for getting testimonials from our members, but basically it's just a simple little piece of software and mobile app. You send them a link and it will, the, the app will prompt the person. So it'll say, you know, tell me about your experience with this. And then it'll give them 30 seconds to record. They record a video response. So that's the basics of it, but you can do like a, if this, then that. So if they answer yeah. this, then ask this prompt instead. So a really intuitive, powerful tool for getting video from other people. So you don't even necessarily have to be there. Um, yeah, a lot of creative ways to use that, like getting uh, screening uh, tenants for your rentals. Anyways, uh, Adobe Podcast, I just threw that in the list, so I wouldn't forget about it. We already talked about that. That was a nice surprise. Um, another one is uh, number four, YouTube keywords. I know you're thinking, well, YouTube, that's not a creative use case. Like everybody knows to put their videos on YouTube, but a lot of people don't think about doing keyword research. And so, uh, it, like for YouTube, they just think, oh, I'm just going to put a video and put a video up on, on this topic and hope that it works out. You spend like five minutes doing keyword research. I do before every podcast when I'm coming up with my titles. What is ranking in YouTube? Where's the low hanging fruit? So if you go get Tube Buddy, just Google Tube Buddy or VidIQ, V I D I Q, they both do about the same thing. Um, uh, you can do your keyword research with them and find the low hanging fruit. So it'll tell you like the competition for that keyword and what people are searching for, what the intent is. So if it's actually the video you want to be shooting. So anyways, uh, not to overcomplicate it, but if you have been doing videos for some time, then take some time to do some basic keyword research and optimize the videos that you're shooting because why not? Um, number three, no, that was number four. My ordering is, we've added so many in here. Uh, my ordering is all off. Uh, bomb, 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 bomb. This is specifically for agents. I don't know. I haven't used it myself. So I'd imagine an investor could use it. I don't see why not. Um, but for follow-up, so little videos that go into emails for follow-up, um, agents are using this for like, Hey, here's what to expect next. Um, or as a thank you video, thanks for working with me. Do you, Josh, do you have any clients that do like follow up videos, anything like yeah. that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And campaigns, like if they, uh, especially like text or email campaigns, they will leverage that stuff, uh, like bomb bomb videos in there. Bomb bombs kind of like phased out just a little bit. I think there's a couple mm -hmm. other tools that people use, but it is still useful. That's funny because chat, <laughs> chat GPT, like shut up about chat GPT. I went to chat GPT before we hit record just to see if there was any I was missing. And the first one, it was like, oh, bomb bomb. Yeah. Um, yeah. another one, uh, real quick loom videos, Josh and I were talking about process. I love loom videos. I yes. will die by them because you can just hit record. Um, I intentionally, so what is loom? It's just a quick little Google Chrome plugin goes on your browser. You click it and it screen records you, you, your camera and your screen. And you can just send somebody a URL to that video. So you don't have to do any editing, download, upload to YouTube, send them the YouTube link. You don't have to do any of that for, so for internal videos, like super quick and dirty loom videos is a great way to explain things. And a lot of software is like building this in now, like Slack and Airtable. Yeah. It's already built in. Um, but, Pro tip, don't upgrade your account. Stick with the free version. It's a five minute limit because it will make you be concise. Yeah. I never record over five minute videos on Loom. 
um, it'd be dangerous for me to upgrade. Dude, it's a habit. I do the same thing. Like I have not upgraded it. I use I use Loom four or five times a day and I still haven't upgraded because I'm like, I gotta keep it short. <laughs> That's then you're if, like if it requires four. more than five minutes, I'm getting on a Zoom call with you. So Right. Exactly. Exactly. For reals. Um, another one, 360 virtual tours. Um, this is not news to any of you, but um we were on a podcast a while back and one of our members mentioned how they were using um uh, Matterport like an agent would. This was an investor and they're doing 360 virtual tours for their buyers list. So as soon as they would get the house under contract, say, hey, we're coming to take photos, put the Matterport up and send that out to those buyers list. It says they, it's, the buyers have so much more confidence when they're able to you know, virtually tour the home and they can get it, uh, get the contract assigned so much quicker. So uh, if you're an investor, consider Matterport um, before and after flip videos on your site. So a lot of people do this on Instagram, little IG stories. Hey, here's this house we're working on. Um, I think that also could lend a lot of credibility. Um, if you are flipping houses and you're doing it well, um, I think of home buying guys in Dallas, they're members of ours. They really take pride in how they flip their homes. Um, they care about them and they are doing the community a service. So if you're doing that type of flip where you're really improving the property, put it on your website. People love to see that um, as incentive to work with you versus someone else. Um, and then the last one, social media repurposing. I figured that'd be a good note for Josh to end on. Um, I mean, we could talk about this all day. We won't, but social media repurposing. So Josh, like, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm an investor, I'm making these videos that we're talking about, what's, what's like the easiest, uh, low hanging fruit, like ways I can repurpose these videos because it'd be, it'd be bad not to do any repurposing, but you also don't want to go ham and try to be the next TikTok influencer. Yeah. I'm going to give an answer that probably most people will not like. <laughs> but you have to do this or you're not going to stay consistent because consistency is the number one factor to any success within content. It's hire it out. And you can leverage tools like or platforms like Fiverr or Upwork. A lot of people have like, especially marketers, they have a bad taste in their mouth with Fiverr. I use Fiverr pretty often on some small little projects that I need done. You can also go to Upwork and find video editors that will help you chop up the content, repurpose it, and possibly even post it for you. The reality is, is that if you're a business owner, you don't necessarily most of the time, and this is why, this is where like we come in and people hire us is because they don't have the time or the ability or the want to, to keep up with this kind of stuff. So I have my clients focus on recording content and I want them doing nothing else. I don't allow them to check the content. I don't allow them to post it. Obviously that's a little bit of a higher level service. So it's going to cost you more. But you, if you're just getting started, allocate a couple hundred bucks a month to just getting videos edited. You could send them off to a good editor on Fiverr or hire somebody, a freelancer on Upwork to edit videos for you, have them edit it. Maybe you can post it or have an assistant post it for you and just get them out that way. Because the reality is, is what happens, Brady, is that people will shoot videos and then they get stuck at the editing portion because they spend so much time on it and then they just don't do it later on. Like they, they'll... They'll be fired up about it for a month and then if it, it phases out, now you literally wasted a month of doing literally nothing. Um, mm. That's my short answer. If you are the type of person that you want to do it yourself, uh, there's very simple tools that you can use to edit videos. Of course, like from a professional standpoint, Premiere Pro uh, is great. And it actually has gotten to a point where it's pretty easy to use. Uh, like it's very user friendly. It's not, it, it still has all the technical aspects of it, but it's not as complex as it used to be. Uh, and of course, if you have a Mac device, iMovie is a really easy to use platform to, you know, edit your videos on. But, um, outside of that headliner dot app is really good as well. And oh, yeah. there's, there's tons of other platforms. We've been using, can... I forgot about that. We've been using headliner for, I mean, I've been using it for years for podcasts. Yeah. They were the first ones to say, okay, drag in your audio or video. Yeah. Add captions the automatically and make podcast too. snippets. Yeah. yeah, audiograms, yep. Yeah, so that's what I would use, but I'm just going to lean back into hire it out. Like, Stop being a cheap, a cheapy, be willing to spend some money on some of your marketing and hire somebody for 200 bucks a month to uh, edit your videos and get them back to you. That's what I would say. I think that's a great answer, and I want to I wanna dive deeper real quick, and then I swear we'll wrap it up. But um, So 
I think it's a good answer that you say hired out, not because you're the guy with an agency who does this really well, but because there are there's diminishing returns to with anything. And the diminishing returns, correct me if I'm wrong, but here's, you know, Brad and I were just having a conversation in the office about this the other day. The diminishing returns with social media are high, meaning people might ask us, you know, like, why don't you post to social media more often? My take on it is we post enough to stay relevant to make sure that when someone comes across our Instagram feed that there's things on there. It's somewhat current. It's interesting. There's there's stuff there to consume, but we're not posting a thousand times a day. Yeah. Um, that's why when I hear you say hire it out, I'm like, it's it's more scalable that way. If you're, if social media is a strategy, I feel like, maybe I'm being long winded this, with this, but I feel like there's this big gap between like you post you know, once a week and it's effective, you post, you know, 10 times a week and it's marginally more effective. Is that yeah. the case? No. Well, it depends. There's platforms, there's platform specific. Like what I, what I tend to do is take what the platform wants and, and go all in on that. Like for instance, mm -hmm. if you're not posting at least a video a day on Instagram, you're obsolete, just period. Especially if you, especially mm -hmm. if you're just starting to create content, you will be obsolete if you're posting less than one video a day. It's just the reality of it. It's how the platforms work on mm -hmm. YouTube. If you're not posting at least two to three videos weekly that are core videos, you're going to be obsolete or, or it's going to be really hard for you to get traction at all. Um, mm -hmm. But with these platforms, you really have to like volume is a key. You have to put into what they want. And generally speaking with reels, TikTok videos, YouTube shorts, velocity is the name of the game because these are shorter videos, you got to feed more into it. But even if you look at it, one video a day on Instagram, let's just say it's seven videos that are a minute long, that's seven minutes worth of recording. Right. I mean, that's that's really not as much as you might think it is. So right. um, that's a week's worth of content. So volume does matter. What My formula today is volume plus quality is really what, and it's the right volume, the right volume, the right type mm. of quality, the right efforts combined is what's going to get you the success out there that you you need. Um, so in a way, it does matter. But do you need to be posting 10 times a day? Probably not. Uh, that being said, I don't know if it would hurt you. We have a client that we post five times a day for, and they kill it. So <laughs> go figure. <Right. laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And con thank you for that context, man. That's, that's, I appreciate the insight there. That's specifically more geared towards influencers. If you're right. looking to get motivated seller leads, like Again, please don't start posting to Instagram, yeah. TikTok 10 times a day. Like, yeah. You got to consider your demographic. If they're not following you on Instagram, then you only need to be creating the content that they're going to consume, which for the most part, if it's transactional, it's just going to be informational content about what it is you do and that kind of thing. So yeah. Awesome, man. Well, this has been value packed. This is the longest podcast I've recorded in a while. I have no shame about it. Um, but hopefully everybody listening, you have found this helpful. If we missed anything, if there's a tool that you're using or a tip that somebody gave you, uh, let us know, send me an email, Brady at care.com, or if you're on YouTube, drop it in the comments below. And, uh, thanks for listening. And Josh, thanks so much for joining me, man. Yeah, man. This is a lot of fun. Hope to be back soon. Yep. All right. We'll catch y'all later.